couple of weeks ago, uh, as you know, we have a Christian school here, New Harvest Christian School, and uh, the curriculum that we use is uh, from the uh, ACE, it's Accelerated Christian Education, and we use that curriculum that not only uh, is obviously uh, educational, it, 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 it brings the students into a place where prepares them for higher education if they want, but also uh, teaches them about the character values that are so critical and important uh, in their lives as young adults and, and young children. And so uh, every year there's a convention that uh, ACE holds, one for the juniors, the smaller uh, uh, grade levels, and then for the older uh, teenagers, which are the high school level. Uh, the, a few weeks ago, uh, we went to the uh, junior level ACE convention, and uh, 16 of our students uh, competed there and went uh, to that convention. And we have a quick video uh, that we want to show you this morning so you can get an idea of what took place. So guys, if we have that ready. Come on, kids. Come on up. Come on up. Well, I can hear all these medals rattling. Come on. Very, very, very good.
Awesome. Wow. They did an awesome job, and you, and, 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 uh, you can go ahead and be seated. You know, uh, they, they competed in so many different events, uh, not only in sports, but in poetry, in, in spelling, in reading, math sciences, uh, all kinds of different events. Uh, there were uh, hundreds of students there, and there were dozens of schools throughout the state of uh, California, as well as uh, some, uh, one from Reno, Nevada, and from uh, Arizona that attended this ACE convention and competed uh, in these sports. And these are the kids uh, that uh, competed. They did awesome. They were there for a couple of days, you know, and uh, what a blessing uh, it was uh, for them to, to compete. I want to thank uh, uh, the chaperones, Matt and Monica Pernalber. Pernalber. Uh, also, uh, Angel and, and Sonia were there helping out. Also, they were there uh, giving a hand. And I'd like to uh, especially thank uh, Brother Zamarano, who was there, helped us with our basketball, the girls with the basketball, and uh, helped them to, to kind of get things together. Man, it's competitive. It was competitive, and uh, they did such a fantastic job uh, all uh, the time that they were there. Thank you, parents, for your investment in these children, and uh, you know, I, can't look, uh, I look forward to seeing them go up and do greater things uh, uh, in their school. Praise God. And, and uh, just an encouragement for those of you who wonder what our school's all about, this is what it's all about. Uh, it gets better and better as the kids go, and they continue to grow. So thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your support. And we're looking forward to the next, next place they're going to be. So, all right, kids, you had your time of glory? Good. You can go ahead and go down now. Congratulations to all of you. Thanks, Matt. Thank you. Praise God. It was an awesome week, or not a week, a couple of days, two days there. And uh, they, uh, thank you, teachers, for preparing them. Uh, the teachers prepared them. Thank you. And, and the monitors in the school who helped them and prepared them to achieve uh, their, their uh, uh, medals and to, and to have great success. And so I'm excited, and it was a blessing, and I'm looking forward to seeing what the, the seniors are going to do now and the high schoolers, how, how they're going to compete in a couple of weeks. I think in March, they're going to be going uh, to that convention. So praise the Lord. I see jerseys out there. All right, all right, we got that out of the way. And um, from what I understand, they made the Raiders fans go to the uh, metal detector twice. But anyway, y'all y'all here, everybody made it safe, and uh, we're going to have a great time uh, in the Word of God, and I'm sure you've got to have great, great things happening right after our service this morning. Praise the Lord. Well, as I mentioned um, a couple of weeks ago, God laid it on my heart. Uh, to do a, 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 a mini-series, three different messages uh, that link us with God. And I entitled it, Allies with God, Being in Alliance with the Lord. Because too many times we as uh, the people of God, as Christians, lose sight of God in our lives and what He has promised us. And I was, as I was preparing uh, this message, I, I was thinking about you know, current events, and, and you can always line up current events with the Word of God, because God always gives us insight into the happenings that are, are taking place, and the way we are to respond to what the world is doing. And, and for the last several months, we've heard a lot about what was going on uh, in, in the uh, Near East, and uh, with the Ukraine and Russia and all that that has been happening there. And you heard a lot about NATO, an organization called NATO, North Atlantic Treaty uh, Organization. And what NATO is, basically, is, is that it forms a protection. It's a group of 
countries uh, that when you join NATO, that there are certain and specific uh, uh, protections and provisions uh, that is afforded to those specific countries. And uh, during this time when Russia invaded the Ukraine, there was a couple of countries who were not a part of NATO, but yet were in proximity to Russia, started to look into becoming members of NATO because why? They lack the resources, the strength, the, the numbers, and military power to fend off any invasion. And so that's why NATO was so, so important to those who are a part of it. I was reading part of NATO's um, uh, mandate and what they have to say about their organization and to the countries who are a part of that organization. Listen to what they say. NATO promises, keyword promises, to guarantee the freedom and security of its members through political and military means. And so what NATO, this, this North Atlantic Treaty Organization, uh, promises to do, and the key word is promises, is to protect, to provide, and bring security by any means, whether political or military, to anyone who's invaded uh, or who uh, is, is being um, um, offended and, 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 and bothered by another country outside of NATO. You see, we are a part of that. The United States is a part, a, a big member of NATO. And that's critical and important because those smaller countries, again, are looking for security, they're looking for peace, uh, and they're looking for freedoms. It kind of sounds like what God wants to do for you and I this morning. It, it sounds like the promises that God makes to you and I and the benefits that come with those who are linked together with the Son of God, the Lord uh, Jesus Christ. Because in a relationship, when we become allies with God through His Son, Jesus Christ, God promises us the security, the benefits, and freedoms, and privileges that come with being a child of God. Isn't that exciting for you this morning? And that's important for us to, to hold on to. It's critical for us uh, to make sure we maintain that understanding. Why? Because there are too many of God's people that live beneath their privileges. Too many of God's people that live uh, beneath uh, where God wants them to live. We have an awesome God this morning. And uh, he wants us to become an ally with him uh, so that he can protect us, that he can provide for us and bring a security that otherwise we would not have. He doesn't want us to be spiritual paupers or spiritually bankrupt. And that's what happens to Christians who lose uh, or forget who God is and uh, what God uh, has promised, just like those countries uh, who are a part uh, of NATO. And so this morning what I want to do is start off this series, uh, and uh, I entitled it, Allies uh, with God, God's Promises. Because I believe that this morning, when we're able to stand and hold on to the promises of God, that he speaks to you and I, that no matter what we face, what we go through, what comes against us, God, because of his promises, will be there to protect us, to provide for us, and uh, to meet every need uh, that we have. Promises are so, so important uh, this morning. Why? Because the devil wants to bring doubt into our mind regarding the promises uh, of God. And he uses all types uh, of, of 
things and situations to bring doubt into the minds of God's people. And I'm just kind of starting off a little slow here this morning. I'll get into my text and my scripture in a few moments. And this morning, the enemy uses methods. He uses a public relations. We live in a PR society, don't we? Everything is public. Everything is relational. Social media, TV ads that promise uh, certain results. If you buy my product, if you use this product, this is going to happen. You're going to get this, and you'll be like this. And most, for the most part, their promises don't come through after you spent your money. Well, too bad. It's gone. The promises uh, were there, but they didn't happen. We've all experienced things like that, even through people. How many have ever had someone you know or love or have a relationship, make you a promise, and then break it. I think we all, we've all been there. Isn't that right? Sometimes parents make promises to kids. Don't hold it against us, kids. They're right there. So you're supposed to be in class. What's going on? <laughs> Sometimes parents promise kids certain things. I'll do this. I'm going to do this. And then we don't come through for whatever reason and we break the promise. Sometimes kids make promises to parents, and the promises are broken. We've all been there. Politicians make promises. Uh, they'll do this, they'll do that, etc., and so on. But we all know rarely do they follow through with their promises. We even make promises to ourselves. How many have ever made a promise to yourself? We look in the mirror and say, hey, you, this is what I promise. Huh? A week later, we look in the mirror, the promise is broken. What happened to the promise? And people say, well, promises are made to be broken. Well, that may be true in the world, and that may be true with mankind, but it's not true with God, because when God makes a promise, he will always come through with his promise. He will never, ever not come through with his promise. I love the story about a little kid who was kneeling by his bedside and he was praying. And this was his prayer. Dear God, bless mama and bless daddy and bless grandma and grandpa. And God, make sure you take care of yourself because if anything happens to you, we're all sunk. <laughs> I think that's a good promise. I think that a good, a good prayer because we know that it's only God that we can depend on and it's only God who will always come through no matter what uh, because why? We are allies with God. We are allied with God, uh, connected to him uh, and his promises are so, so critical for us this morning. God made his promise to Israel and this is the key for you and I to always remember in Joshua 21, in verse 45. It says this about God and his promises that he made to Israel. Not a single one of all the good promises the Lord had given to the family of Israel was left unfulfilled. Everything he had spoken came true. The devil's a liar this morning. The devil is a liar. You have to believe that. And the account we're going to read in our text uh, out of uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, if you turn your Bibles over to there, and I'm reading out of uh, the Word of God here. Paul the Apostle had uh, made a trip to Corinth, and he spoke to them that he was going to, after his first trip, going to go back. But something happened, and he wasn't obviously able to keep his promise. And so what happened is that uh, the people of that church began to accuse the apostle Paul of being careless with his promises and uh, with the will of God. And Paul was human. And some things came up, and they were saying, Paul, you just 
Make plans only to please yourself. So Paul's credibility was on the line. Let's read out of the Word of God. Contemporary English version is what I have this morning. First, or Second Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 15. Paul writes, I was so sure of your pride in us that I had planned to visit you first of all. In this way, you would have a blessing of two visits from me once on my way to Macedonia, and again on my return from there. Then you could send me on to Judea. Do you think I couldn't make up my mind about what to do? Or do I seem like someone who says yes or no simply to please others? God can be trusted, and so can I. When I say our answer to you has always been yes and never no. This is because Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is always yes and never no. He is the one uh, who Silas and Timothy and I told you about. And then in verse 20, it's key. Christ says yes to all God's promises. This is why we have to say amen uh, for us to the glory of uh, God. And so Paul's integrity was being questioned because he made a promise and he wasn't able to keep it. How many have ever been in that position? I think we have all been in that position. And Paul, as he's explaining about, hey, I'm not just being loose with my promises. I'm not just just trying to please myself. He says, and then he switches, and he starts to compare. He, He starts to talk about Jesus. And he says, yeah, okay, I'm a man. Yes, you know, I'm human in a sense. He's saying that because now he starts to refer to Jesus Christ. And he says, God can be trusted. Maybe I didn't keep my promise, but don't let that stop you from trusting God. You see, this morning, we've all had promises broken to us in one way or another. But don't let the devil lie to you and put God in that same box uh, as those who broke their promises to you. Don't let the devil lie to you and say, ah, well, they let you down, and you know what? They didn't keep their word, and they burned you, etc., and so on. And, you know, what makes God any difference? I'll tell you what makes God different. Uh, he is the creator of heaven and earth. Uh, he is the, the, the supreme uh, king of kings, and he always keeps his promise. Christ always says yes to his promises. That's powerful. People will let you down. People will let us down. But God will never, ever let us down. He keeps his promise. The foundation this morning of this series is going to be based on the promises of, of God. Yesterday, we had an outstanding, it was, it was a, a wonderful celebration of life for Sister Nora. And, and as, as Pastor Juan, yes, amen. Right now, she's in heaven and... and, and I tell you, she's rejoicing and and dancing for the Lord in heaven right now. And it was a wonderful memorial. And and Pastor Juan was preaching, and he mentioned, and he was describing Sister Nora and her her last couple of weeks, I guess, as as she was um, not doing well in her health. And he showed me a video and she was in, the, in the, 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 the church there, and she had her flags, and she loved to do her flags, and she was singing and waving her flags and dancing with her flags. And he said, you know, Sister Nora was a soldier. She always uh, was standing for God, and she always stood uh, and believed the promises of God. No matter what she went through, no matter what was going on in her life, up until the very end, she stood upon the promises of God. And you see, that's so powerful this morning because uh, as the Christians, uh, you and I are allies with God, just like Sister Nora is. I'm not going to say was because she is with Jesus right now. You and I are here on this earth 
And we are connected to God. He is our protector, our ally. No matter what it is you face in this life, God will never let you down. His promises are yes and amen. Always, always keeps his promises. And we're going to look at a few of those promises in a few moments, but I needed to bring that to you because usually that's where the enemy comes and lies. We have the word of God. We know who God is. But the clearer picture this morning that we need to have is that we are allied with him and that he is there for us. And as we look at the word of God, there are conditions that are based upon entering into the promises of God. And, you know, when you look at the Word of God, and, and this is the part that we kind of struggle with, because we just want, you know, we live in a society today where everything's free. You, you can't pay for it, just go in, take it, put it in your backpack, and walk out. It's a mentality. Why do you think people are doing that? Why do you think that's happening? Because they're poor? No, because they're thieves. It's the bottom line. And they have a mentality that it's free, so who cares? I can do what I want. And too many times, we get wrapped up in, 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 well, you know, there's a condition. What's the condition? You need money to buy the deodorant. You need money to buy the soap and the toilet paper and uh, the bananas and whatever else you're going to eat. You need money. That's a condition in order to receive the product. And we understand that, everybody in here, I'm sure. No matter what kind of jersey you wear, you get it. But when it comes to, unfortunately, sometimes the, the, the Word of God and the promises of God, we, we kind of stumble at the fact that, well, well, God, you already died for me, and you, you, you paid for my sins, and I'm, I'm born again, in which we are, and I'm, my name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life, which it is. And then we get to the point where there's a condition to entering in to those promises, we, we, we stumble. Oswald Chambers, a, a, a biblical author and writer of, of, God's, of, of, of commentary and, and, and books, Christian books, he said, never try to explain God until you first obeyed him. The only bit of God that we understand is the bit that we have obeyed. And you see, a lot of times we have a problem with this word obedience. And, and, and when it comes to God's word and what he's going to do for us. See, in the book of Deuteronomy, in chapter 7, God is speaking to Israel. And he's talking to them about the alliance with God and his people, that he has with, with his children and how he wants to bless them. And listen to what he says to them in verse 12, Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 12. If you pay attention to these laws and are careful to follow them, then the Lord, your God, will keep his covenant of love with you as he swore to your forefathers. Then he goes on to, to explain what he's going to do. He's going to love and bless and increase our numbers and bless the fruit of our wombs and etc. and the flocks and so on and so forth. And so what God says, I promise you, I'm going to bless you and take care of you and protect you and meet all of your needs. All I ask is for you to obey me. I mean, that's not too difficult to understand. And as parents, we always let our children know, look, we want to provide for you. We want to bless you. We want to meet your needs. We want to buy you things. We want to take you places. But, but first, there's some things you need to do. There's some things that need to take, be taken care of. And when you do them, then the blessing and all that follows is going to come. I promise you, I'll do that if you do this. Guess who usually breaks the agreement? 
with God. We do. We are the ones that usually break the agreement in that alliance. God is always faithful to his promises and his word, but man always does, wants to do his own thing. Why? Because we start to believe over a period of time we can go through life on our own uh, and uh, uh, have our own strength and wisdom and we don't need God as our ally anymore. It's during those times when we are at ease, when we are prospering maybe, or we are in comfort, in a comfort level in our spiritual walk, that we start to stop depending on God as an ally and start looking to ourselves as the strength and provider. I read an illustration about a mouse and an elephant who were going to cross a bridge. You probably heard it before. And as they were crossing the bridge, it shook as they crossed. And when they got to the other side, the mouse said to the elephant, boy, we really shook that bridge, didn't we? <laughs> See, sometimes we can be like that mouse. We think that all that happens and all that takes place in our lives, we did it. And we provided, and uh, we are the ones that came through in the crunch and this, this, and the other. When we forget, it's God the one who helped us make it through those times of difficulty. It's God who is the one that provided, gave us the breath, the strength, the wisdom uh, to be able to accomplish what we have accomplished. See, God is the stronger ally. And we are the weaker party. And God says, I want to have a partnership with you. I want to be in an alliance with you. I want to protect and provide for you. Because without me, you're nothing. You believe that this morning? Without God, we're nothing? Who's saying that? Just Pastor Richard? No. No. John chapter 15, verse 5. Jesus is saying that. He said, I am the vine, and you are the branches. Whoever abides in me, and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you, me, can do nothing. Nothing. Like the score is going to be for somebody this afternoon. Ooh, I don't know who. We can do nothing without God. He says we can only be fruitful through Him and bear fruit only because of Him. And it's the enemy that comes and lies and says, it doesn't matter. You don't have to hook up with God. You don't have to join, join and be in alliance with God all the time. You can be on your own sometimes. Cut them loose for a little while, and when the going gets tough, go, go ahead and come back. Well, I understand God is a gracious God, and he's a God of second and third chances, and we know all of that. But what about the time that you're separated and the hurt that you're going through and the loss that you're experiencing? You see, the key to the promises of God and his alliance and the promises is that we be faithful and obedient to, to him. 1 John chapter 3 and verse 22. Dear friends, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence before God and receive from him anything we ask. Uh-oh. I think there's a condition after that. Because we obey his commands and do what pleases him. You see, this morning, the promises of God are yes and amen. They will always be there. He will always be behind them and bring them to pass every single one of them that he's made to you and to me. But the condition, before you clap, is that 
we remain obedient to his word. See, when we surrender to Jesus and uh, we allow him to be Lord of our life, those promises come to pass and we can say, like the Apostle Paul says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me daily. Why can we say that? Simply because uh, we are tapped in to the alliance that God has provided for us, uh, and through obedience, uh, his promises are coming to pass. No matter what the situation, the, the, the circumstance might be, we can do it all through Jesus Christ, go through it all, uh, make it through it all, whatever the case might be. Because he wants to be in a relationship with us, in a, an alliance uh, where one on one doesn't always equal two, but it's whatever God says it is. That's a supernatural alliance, a supernatural partnership when we are in that relationship with the Lord. We can be greater because of God's alliance in our lives than we can be by ourselves. You believe that? Because we can be nothing by ourselves. But because we are allied with, with God through His Son, Jesus Christ, greater things, Jesus said, will you do. You believe that this morning? Greater things will you do. Why? Because of God's promise to us. Listen to what D.L. Moody said. If God is your partner, make your plans big. I like that, don't you? <laughs> God is your partner, man. I'll, no matter what the devil says, I'm bigger than that. Greater is he that's in me than he that is in the world. I'll make my plans big. I'm not going to minimize my destiny simply because of, of what, what I'm lacking physically or, or mentally in my life but I'm going to make my plans according to God's word. As a, I'm a Christian. I'm a child of God. God is my partner. Big plans, God. I want to, I want to build a, your kingdom. I want to reach millions of people. What kind of plans are you making? I know you got plans this Sunday. You're making big plans? Some of you are making big plans. 1 John 4, 4 says, Little children, you are from God. Wow. And have conquered them. For the one who is in you, the scripture I just read, is greater. Jesus is greater than he who is in the world. Let's quickly go down to some of God's promises. I'm going to give you scripture. If you're taking notes, write them down wherever you need to, because it's important, because too many times we forget, or oh, we don't know them. God promises to hear our prayers. Isaiah 65 and verse 24. Don't ever stop praying. God promises to hear our prayers. God promises to protect the church during persecution, times of persecution. Even now, as the church is being persecuted, Christians are being persecuted People that believe as Jesus uh, is the Son of God and the way, the truth, and the life, and no man comes to the Father but by Him. Those kinds of folks, you and I, are being persecuted. And God says in Matthew 16, 18, uh, that the gates of hell will not prevail against His church. He will build it. He will build it. He will build it. That's part of the promises of God. God promises to reward us uh, for being faithful. Matthew chapter 16, verse 27. He will never leave us, as we know, never leave us alone. Hebrews 13 and verse 5. He will never leave us without comfort. Psalm 94 and 19. Yesterday, during this celebration of life, you could sense that people were being comforted because of the presence of God, because of the promises of God that were being shared to those who were in attendance. There was the comfort of the Lord that was there. 
God promises to turn our tragedies into victories uh, and uh, triumphs. Ro Romans 8, 28 uh, speaks to us, gives us that encouragement. And because of time, I'm just rushing through and not reading the scripture. You write them down. God all promises to always help us overcome temptation. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 13. Here's one. God promises to what? Never give up on us. Now that one ought to get you excited this morning. God promises to never ever give up on us. Philippians 1 verse 6. He promises to give us abilities to accomplish his will and his purpose when the devil lies to us, says, ah, oh, you can't do this and you'll never be able to accomplish this. Turn around and says, no, devil, you're a liar. James uh, uh, 1 and verse 5 says, if anybody lacks wisdom, we should ask God. God will give us the wisdom to be able to do that. Philippians 2.13, for it is God who works in us to do both his will for his good pleasure. And then in 1 John 1, 9, God promises to forgive us for our sins when we confess them. That's huge this morning. That is huge. Just a few of God's promises as our worship team makes their way up this morning. So if we have so many of God's promises and we understand this morning that we are allies with God he is the superpower of superpowers uh, in creation. More powerful than any atomic bombs that could ever be made or created. We are in alliance with him and have his promises. Then the question do I have to, I have to ask is why are so many Christians living beneath their privilege? And the answer is because they fail to apply the promises of God to their lives. They just fail to apply them. They fail to, to tap into them. The good news is God's not the problem this morning. He always comes through. The issue is you and me believing and acting on them. As I was getting this message and getting it ready, I, I, I thought about Pilgrim's Progress, John Bunyan. And that, that book and that story, and there was a time when Christian and hopeful were locked deep down in the dungeon of the giant's despair, and they couldn't get out, and they were there, and they were desperate, and they were despairing. And then Christian remembered that he had on his key ring the key that said promise. And then he realized that that key on his key ring would open any door to that dungeon. And he could walk out of that dungeon into the sunlight. All he had to do was use the promise key. You and I this morning have uh, the key to the promises of God. And all we need to do is to get the keys of God's promise when we find ourselves in despair and brokenness and hurting and fear and say, devil, you're a liar. Let me out of this spiritual dungeon. Get the promises of God and open those doors and come into the sunlight of God's love, God's healing, and God's security this morning. In 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 4. And because of his glory and excellence, he has given us great and precious promises. These are the promises that enable you to share his divine nature and escape the world's corruption caused by human desires. In view of all this, Listen, make every effort to respond to God's promises. Are you locked 
as Christian and hopeful were, in a dungeon of despair, brokenness and fear, darkness and hopelessness. One of Pastor Juan's points yesterday that he talked about Christians who had no hope and their lives and how they were probably in despair and brokenness in the spiritual dungeon of, of, of lostness. And then he contrasted that with those who had hope in Christ. And how powerful that is when we are aligned with Christ and we are allies with Christ. That we have the key to the promises of God. And Peter says, make every effort to tap in to the promises and to respond to the promises of God. Get into God's Word daily. Read the Word of God. Look at what God says about your life and what His promises are to you. And as you strengthen yourself by faith in God's Word, uh, you will be able to overcome the strategies, temptations, uh, and lies uh, of the enemy. You see, we're not only promised by God that He will provide for us here and now, but it's for the future generations. It's for those who will come after us. God promises if when you ally yourself to me and we are allies, it's not only for now, but for later. Deuteronomy 29, 14. I am making this covenant with its oath or promise not only with you who are standing here with us today in the presence of the Lord our God, but also with those who are not here today. I don't only want to protect you, provide and bring security to you. I want to do that for your children, your grandchildren, the next generations that are going to follow. I'm going to align myself with them as you keep your promises to me. As you keep your obedience to me, it'll go beyond uh, you this morning. As our heads are bowed and our eyes are closed,